So I want to ask if you can speak to the proper method and channel of reporting vulnerabilities to a vendor, because on a past episode of the podcast, I spoke to Connor Gregg uh, in the UK, who now famously uh, had a story about how he received a string of, of passwords and data from McDonald's after winning a contest prize. When they sent him his prize via email, they ended up sending out their entire sort of access. And he spent a frantic weekend trying to find someone at corporate. They didn't have a bug bounty program. So he spent like 24 hours trying to find someone to report it to, and he had to call the US and then they had to give him the number for the UK. So um, can you tell me about what needs to happen at the reporting level? Because I know that an improper reporting can either cause you to be ignored by the company or even be perceived as a threat. So what channels should you use and what tone should you take and how can you ensure that your findings aren't treated as the work of a pest or even an active threat? Oh, so th this may be the the uh, the most substantial transition that the industry went through throughout the twenty or maybe thirty years, maybe more, mm -hmm. uh, was the standardization of disclosure uh, mechanisms. Yes. And by that, the, the thing that through the nineties, I've 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 rarely um, disclosed um, unless it was anonymous. Disclosed a uh, vulnerability to uh, to a. Uh, uh, an organization just because of the threat of legal uh, over your head, especially as a kid, I didn't want to go through that, mm -hmm. understandably, I think. Yes. Uh, but also, uh, so so back then I tried to do that anonymously and several times it was successful, uh, which was great, great achievement by, by itself. And today you have much more legal mechanisms in place to be able to confront that without the threat of legal action. That said, it still happens. So this is also mm -hmm. something that we are working on, everyone are working on and the community is concerned with, to see that this kind of, disc of, of uh, the general term is responsible disclosure yes. uh, versus full disclosure. We can also, uh, maybe if you would like to go through the differences there. Absolutely, that's the next question, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead, <laughs> please continue. So, so, so responsible disclosure, um, so of course, without nitpicking, because there is a lot to say about the debate around responsible disclosure and what is responsible yeah. to, to begin with. But in general, this was, this is a mechanism that, that uh, uh, you have an agreement or the organization in, in question has some kind of a statement of, we are accepting those kind of, uh, of uh, disclosures. This is the way to go through, through that. And as I said, throughout the 20, maybe 15 years, this, this was uh, like a, an explosion of options there, especially around bug bounties that, that even oh, yeah. took that took that a step further and standardizing the, the way that you should communicate with a third or maybe a, a, a mediator instead of the organization itself and to, to have this kind of triage with, um, I, sh I would say their names, Hacker One and Backcrowd, uh, Back they are the two big ones that have uh, an amazing job of making this kind of mediation between the researchers, hackers, and the organizations themselves. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec Skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.